Hello everyone, Jackson here on behalf of Torfine.com and Future Days, and today it is another exciting episode of Artist Interviews. Today I am sitting with Sander Gavin. How you doing today? Hey guys, doing good. Great day out here in New York City. That's awesome to hear. I mean, is it hot over there where you're at right now? Uh, it actually feels decent, so I actually hate summer. This is kind of weird. I like fall, and I'm just kind of waiting for that 60 degrees to come back. Um, right now it's, it feels nice. It's dry. It's about 80 degrees. Uh, People are out and about, um, so I'd say today is a good day. For most of it, if I say it's great weather, I'm waiting for that nice fall. 60 degrees, I can turn off the AC and actually open up the window. Well, that's great. That's great because, you know, I mean, for us over here, right now, here in LA, oh my God, like this weekend is like the hot, it's like the hottest weekend of the entire summer. Like really, it really is. And it's funny because most places are hitting triple digits right now. We're up to like 95 right now. So it's pretty damn hot. So it's like we're trying to get through it as best as we can. But it's good to see that you guys have some nice weather over there in New York. I'm not going to be jealous about that. <laughs> I will say it is It is getting a little unbearable here, you know what I mean? Wait till we're in uh, January, and then uh, you won't be jealous at all. We'll be like oh, 10 yeah. degrees, you know, slushy, dirty New York snow. So <laughs> yeah. we have like two well, great seasons, like fall and spring, and like summer is usually just gross. Uh, you know, it's New York City, so you have smog and just the streets get dirty, it's muggy, you got to get on the subway. So really, so it's two seasons on the end. Winter starts to get a little funky, and I guess if you go to the beach in the summer, it's good, but if you're at home, it's stuck in quarantine, it's not so great, so. I imagine it gets a little stuffy here and there, but I mean, you guys have, you guys have seasons. Like, for us over here, we have two seasons. We have spring and summer. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no cool down. It's always it's hot. Missing, it doesn't matter. You guys are missing my favorite. You don't get that fall where it's nice and crisp and you yeah. wear a sweater outside. And you guys are dry heat though, right? So it's not like, not heavy at least, right? Yeah. yeah. If we want to, if we want to experience a fall, we're going to have to go up to the mountain somewhere, you know what I mean? Somewhere where it's nice and cool, maybe go up to Big Bear or something, but yeah. So, but with everything going on, it's, it's nice to see that we're enjoying the little things here and there and that, you know, cause I, I know you're an essential worker as well. You know, how is that going for you over there in New York city? Uh, you know, we've been, we got hit early, right? So right in March, uh, we were the first to have the highest numbers in New York or the U S so. We had to act quick. Um, a lot of that was a, originally everything just shut down. Um, so, you know, I do, I'm a coffee professional, so I do a lot of coffee education, stuff like that. Um, so for us, it was kind of waiting for essential, but not like um, essential as far as like healthcare. So, however, healthcare workers need their coffee. So we had to get out and about and keep going. Um, but it's been, uh, New York's been on the pickup. So, you know, now we're doing outdoor dining, which is pretty cool, especially this time of year when it's nice out. And, you know, we have Every, all these cafes around town, you can go and sit with your friends and actually still have some form of communication and contact. So that's been good. Um, you know, for me, I'm super introvert. So those first couple of months were actually kind of nice to be like, I can't go outside and you can't make me. <laughs> I can stay here. And that's really where I started writing music. So like pretty much I've written two albums in that time. So when we shut down in March, like I hadn't written in probably two to three years. Um, it was like me staring at my computer and the keyboard sitting there and I'm like, Eventually, we're gonna have to do this again. Um, and started digging in, and all this music just started pouring out. It's probably like a, it's like I was damn broke, and all of a sudden I had like 20 songs. So for me personally, it was that I think I needed that disconnect from the world, and you know, being a you know professional and dealing with everything you had to do every day in your your corporate world. Um, you know, you come home from that, and you just want to like decompress, and like there's no space to write. Um, so there's definitely some upsides. You know, it, it wasn't something that I'd ever want us to do again, but you know, make silver lining out of it and I think I hear a lot of artists in the same position and I have a lot of friends that probably weren't writing for a long time and now they're releasing music and so I think for artists at least it gave people a lot of time to really focus on you know maybe things that they weren't having the time to do otherwise. Yeah that's very true I know for a lot of you know a lot of creative people out there it's like taking the making the most of this time that we've had um, in, in you know the machine's starting to pick up speed a little bit again you know we're starting to kind of open up and get back to kind of the world that we kind of knew but still in a lot of places like things are you know it's like everybody's still got to be cautious and a lot of people are still very cautious it's like you know even though we're starting to gain speed again it's like it's it's not up to the where to where it was anywhere before before all of this but I think it was really good that when we got to slow down when we really got to slow down we kind of got to reevaluate a lot of things that were happening in the world and in our lives and get back to who we were as people. I think when you are in a in your home, 
in a room and all you have is yourself to kind of have those internal conversations with, I think that's when we kind of find how creative that we can be with ourselves. So I think it's, I think a lot of us have, have really kind of just rediscovered who we are and kind of got back to that, uh, that centered position. And, uh, you know, there, there's still a lot of people who are, are, you know, can't wait to get out, can't wait to get back out into the world, can't wait to be social again and all that stuff. But um, as long as we hold steadfast, things will be better. I feel like so. uh, the extroverts want to get back out, but us introverts, we're like, we're cool. Can I help you? Um, you know, I'll write some music. You can listen to that. Like, I feel like I can just lock, I'm a hermit. Like, if you just let me do this, it's probably not good, but I would stay in my apartment forever writing music. So I would probably look a little bit like Gollum after a while, but um, <laughs> I'd be a happy Gollum, right? So yeah, I think, you know, it gave us an opportunity to kind of reconnect. So you talked a little bit about um, kind of discovering who you are again. I think, you know, it took a couple of weeks, but in that it was like, this passion for music came back out. Um, I think when you're focused, you know, life takes over, right? You get focused on how you're going to pay the bills and the, you eventually build a career, right? Um, mm-hmm. And that takes a lot of energy. And then to recap the, from all that energy at the end of the day, you just want to bed, right? You want to watch yeah. TV, you want to have a, a glass of wine. And, you know, music, while it's an expression, it can be a lot of, it can also be draining in a lot of ways. You have to have that energy. You have to have the, the will and the want and just be free. And your brain is like swirling with all these thoughts of like, you know, P&Ls and like uh, yeah. what tomorrow's going to be and all that, like it's, there's only so much space, right? Um, yeah. So I think, you know, for artists, this has been a great time. I have friends that do like in paint or whatever art it is, like I'm seeing great stuff come out. Um, and it's just exploding everywhere. So I'm really, I'm actually really excited for what we're going to see. We've already started to see this, but in the next year, all this stuff is going to come out. Um, and I think culturally, we're going to have this explosion of great art and music um, I think that's the silver lining. So I think when we're sitting here and we're worried about, you know, the climate and what's happening politically and socially, um, the silver lining is that artists are allowed to explore and like really they help us kind of find our souls again as people. So that's kind of the artist's job, right? Definitely, definitely. And that right there is what's important, you know, yeah. it's like that creativity coming out in all the different ways it can, whether it's writing, music, any way that you can share your creativity with the world, it's, it's kind of bubbling over now. We're going to see amazing things. We are seeing amazing things now, but I think when we get back to 100%, yeah. many, 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 many more amazing things are coming. I think a lot of this stuff's on hold too. I think about, you know, I wrote all this stuff, but I can't release it all at once. I would have like 10 years ago, but now I'm trying to be smart about it and with yeah. Spotify and streaming, you want to trickle, right? So it's, you can't drop 20 songs, like, right. one at a time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I built, which is what makes them back at work. I built, you know, 20 songs, and I'm pretty much released all the way through next spring. So I'm like, now if I'm writing a song, I'm writing it for summer, right? So I'm already thinking now, like, trying to give myself that window so now I can continue uh, releasing without the pressure of having to do a full album. So get it all ready to go and then just trickle it down. Trickle it out and then write on work, have six months to work on your next song. And if you're that far ahead, it's, you're able to produce a, a pace that creativity is going to allow you to. So today we're going to ask you a couple of questions and see where it goes from here. Are you ready to get into it? Sure, multiple choice or? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if they were, right? <laughs> a, B, or C. C. Yeah. Take that exactly. one. Exactly. C. I'll do that one. All right. Let's do it. So tell us about Sander Gavin. Uh, so that's actually my real name. Um, but me as an artist, uh, you know, I started music by late nineties. Um, I was kind of a goth kid. So I was doing like dark wave music. Um, you know, really started out just exploring, uh, synthesizers. I remember getting this little Casio keyboard. I think I've seen it even in post, but it had like a little portamento sound in it. You could record some samples. Um, and I just love to explore, uh, you know, with the synth sounds. So I've always, I grew up on that, right? So I was part of the MTV generation and, I remember being a kid and watching Take On Me, Aha, and like that image and that song and that style of like Duran Duran and Take Aha and The Cure, like when you grow up with that, it just makes an impression. Um, so that music kind of followed me. And of course, then I went a bit gothy. Uh, so while I was still a little bit uh, 80s in there, I kind of started doing more like Zymox, um, different like dark wave bands. Uh, and ended up in the early 2000s in the Detroit um, Kind of more industrial scene, so like did some shows out in Labyrinth and City Club. Um, still with like an 80s edge, but probably more of like the wax track style. So like early ministry was a big influence or front 242. Um, so we had this like industrial kind of edge. Um, it's in a couple of bands in Detroit, uh, kind of working through that, which we'll probably talk about when you talk about uh, you know, where the music kind of came from. 
Um, eventually I moved to New York City and uh, decided it was the best move to go solo. So uh, in 2010, uh, I released my first solo album. Um, a lot of the music I did at that point, it was just, I wasn't performing live. So um, it was just for me. I write for myself to kind of give myself the music to listen to that I would want to hear on the radio or, or whatnot. Um, and 2010 was a weird time, right? There wasn't like earlier on in the early 2000s, there was a lot of like synth pop out there and there was a good time for that kind of music. And when I released, it was kind of not, um, not really happening. You didn't hear a lot of that sound. Um, but I released it. It was a fantastic uh, expression just to be able to do it on my own because I'd worked in bands a lot before that. Um, probably for the next, I think up until 2016, I was writing uh, original stuff under my solo project. Um, did a couple of like backlogs where I took uh, you know, bands I'd worked in and then maybe recorded demos and we, I redid them with the help of like finding a demo and like resynthesizing it, and working with studio musicians to make it a reality. Um, I think the last one I did was 2017, which was one of those. So it was a band I used to work in, Fascination Incorporated. Um, and I found these demos. I worked with my old keyboardist. And we just kind of like redid it how we meant it to be. So, you know, the band was short lived. We did one show, it was fighting and people, you know, split drug use and all of that stuff like happens in a early 20s something band. Um, but so there were some really good uh, songs in there, some good tracks. So um, kind of put those back out in the world. I felt like they needed to be recorded. Um, if not for myself, just to hear what I thought they would, would be like. After that one, I kind of was on a hiatus, you know, I had to, to go into, you know, focusing on, you know, paying the bills and what was going to, what passions were going to take me outside of music. So past three years, I was really digging into that. Um, you know, I do like coffee, per, uh, coffee work. So I got certified as like a Q grader, which is like kind of the sommelier of coffee, where you're smelling stuff and tasting the notes and all that. So that was it's interesting because it was another passion, right? I always do something that I love to do, something creative. And that was like, outside of music was a sensory passion of like exploring and smelling the world and just being very present. Um, that's just fun to be able to drink a cup of coffee and people quiz you. And I'm like, no, that's a pomegranate with apple. And uh, that's just kind of fun. So I was really focusing on that uh, for the past few years. Um, and really uh, what happened obviously with, you know, the world shut down. Um, and in that, like that, corporate world and everything I was working on kind of closed and I found myself locked in my apartment with a keyboard that was staring at me every day and after about a week of just sleeping because I think my brain just needed to shut down I ended up writing so I started working the the joke was going to be like yeah we're going to be closed for two weeks I'll write an album and I'll be back but then I actually did write an album decided to write a full full length album over that time because we weren't closed two weeks obviously a couple months and it just kept pouring out um, and for me like creativity is not something I can like you know, decide, hey, I'm going to write something and it's going to be great. Like, it doesn't work that way. Like, for a lot of times I feel like music just writes through me. It's like, I'll sit at the computer and I'll just, is it going to go? Um, and for the past, you know, from probably like 2016 up until now, it, like nothing was coming up. So it was just, okay, well, that's tapped. Uh, it's not going to happen. But this time it was like explosion. So music just came out. Um, and yeah, so the album happened and then I kept writing past that. And so I just created all these songs of, different things that were inspiring me. I think musically, you know, I'm inspired by uh, hand claps. I love reverb and anything that sounds like it was straight out of 85, uh, that really early kind of experimental processing where you hear these big reverbs and big 80s sounds. Um, that's always been there. And even in my bands, like why we fought a lot is because I always wanted to go 80s. And like, they would have to like, yell at me like, no hand claps, Sander. This one's going to be like modern. I'm like, but dude, just one hand clap, one. You know, being solo, I've been able to do that and kind of, you know, my first album in 2010 was all of that. So it was, you know, not the best produced album because I wasn't used to producing alone, but it was like a full 80s expression of like everything I wasn't allowed to do. And since then, I've just kind of like been crafting that and maintaining that sound, but also exploring, um, adding a little bit of new elements in there. Uh, you know, a lot of my music will come of this like eclectic conglomeration of everything. So you'll hear... You know, The Cure sometimes you'll hear New Order, but then you'll hear more of like EBM or like synth pop from like that early 2000s era where it was a little more dancey. Um, and I love a heavy kick drum. I love a, a good dance vibe. So uh, I kind of flip a lot. Like sometimes I'll have like something that's like house. Um, and so I do have a couple other other projects going on as well. But like for me, Sandra Gavin, I try to keep that the upbeat kind of 80s sound. Um, I want to explore and do something a little bit more modern or like EDM or something like that, I kind of, I'm calling it different projects. 
Um, so I have a couple I'm fiddling with. I've got some dark synth stuff out there um, under a different name, which uh, I'm keeping kind of under the radar. Uh, he's just going to pop up and nobody's going to know what it is. But yeah, so that's being a nutshell, I guess. Well, that's pretty rad. I mean, right there, it's like, you know, even through all of this, even through everything that has happened recently, you have this moment where you just go, well, this thing staring me in the face, I think I'm going to start to explore again with it. And then all of a sudden, it just comes out. It's just like in your head, it just clicks. You have this moment where you're like, I can't shut it off. I can't shut it off. And I think for a lot of creative people, even through all of this, it was like a way to cope with the emotional weight of the world happening at that time. And it, it's like, it's always the, the funny thing about it is, is like, to me, it kind of feels like a renaissance in a way, you know what I mean? Of creativity, where it's like, you know, out of this, out of these dark periods, we have some of the most beautiful things that, that, that come again that sprout up from the, from the bat. And it's great to see that you have climbed your way back out of, out of this little thing, you know what I mean? But also too, it's like going back to your earlier stuff, like that is a pretty impressive like start to your career, you know, like working in all of these different bands, having all of these amazing influences. And as you transition and you, you move forward in life, it's like, yeah, you're right. We have these kind of moments where we kind of shift our focus a little bit. And it's not that, you know, we're shutting away creativity in any way. It's just, you know, we, we, we shift our creativity to something else. We are, you know, focused on something else that brings us joy. And, and happiness. It's like, for myself, it's like, I, I'm, a, I'm a musician as well. I love making music. But it's like, during all of this stuff happening, it's like, I wanted to start doing these artist interviews. It's like shifting creativity to one, to another area. And I think that's what's great about a lot of creative people is that it doesn't matter what it is they're working on. It's always going to be creative in some way, like with you and coffee, like that, to, to me, that's like a whole other language. Like I do not know anything about coffee. I don't even drink coffee, but I can respect people who have that, that talent for identifying all those beautiful flavors. I would imagine it's kind of like wine tasting. Like, is it kind of like wine tasting? Uh, like that? Pretty close. It's probably the closest thing you're going to get. That's obviously a different plant, right? But when we're talking about it, it's, you know, different compounds, but um, when you're tasting a cup of coffee, you're doing it like a wine tasting. So you're smelling, you're cupping it, it's this whole process, right? And then you're kind of analyzing what's in there. Um, you know, I had to go through a week's process uh, for the Q grader exam. They put you in this red room where like, you can't see the color of the coffee and you have to like go through each one and find out which one's different and find out like what's wrong with that or like defects in it. Um, and that stuff's like, it's the same creative part of your brain, right? You're like, it's, you know, a passion. It's something that's like, it's not like working at a desk, right? Which I've always avoided like any kind of desk job. Um, so it was really important for me to do something that I enjoyed to do. And this was another piece. And what was cool about it for me is like, it's not music, right? So early on when I first moved to New York, my plan was, you know, New York City, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do sound production, I'll work on my own thing, and then I'll produce music and produce others in the studio, that kind of thing. Um, and I tried that. I did some internships out here and I was doing ADR, so audio dialogue replacement. And I'm like, this is terrible. Um, and I would leave that like just completely just drawn. I wouldn't want to write at all because like all of my creative audio and sound production was going into work. Um, so I know some people can really do that. And for me, it was like, what's cool now is like my money, my income, all of that is gained from a different space, right? So my music can be completely for me. Um, you know, I do it just to express and for mostly it's just for me to listen to. Um, you know, of course, I'd love other people to hear it, which over the, the past 15 years, like, I've been terrible at marketing. It's just like, yeah, this song's great. I'll just throw it on Spotify, and if they like it, they'll like it. Um, you know, now I'm trying to like, yeah, let's actually try to be a little smarter about that and kind of push it out yeah. there a little bit and see, you know, this could have an impact on somebody else, uh, which I think is important to me. Like I've always said, if one person hears it and it made an impact, um, that's what matters. So um, it's cool. Like since then, I've been putting it out, and I've been getting emails from people. They're like, yeah, this song has changed you know, something in my life or it helped me get through this tough time in quarantine or, or whatever. So uh, some of that's been really rewarding. Um, so I'm starting to see now it's, it's not just about me and it, it can be supporting other people and putting it out there is it's not selfish. It's, you know, here's my baby. Cause I, I feel like a little protected of my song, I try to write this and like, it's great, but then putting it out in the world, it's going to be like, are they going to treat it right? Is it going to be like <laughs> treated? Okay. They're going to like read it for filth. Like what's going to happen. So, um, there's a little bit of that of like putting yourself just out for the world to 
to like or not like and then be okay with the response you get. So uh, well, either you know, way, it's got to go out. Like people have to hear it. It's a legacy. It's, it is what it is. And it, to respect my music, I have to, to give it a chance. Exactly. I mean, you have to give it a fighting chance, you know, yeah. and that's what it's all about in the world. It's like music is not meant to stay on a shelf. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, with everything happening, it's like now is the time we need it the most. So thank you for sharing that with us. I would say some music should stay on the shelf. So <laughs> I have about like <laughs> hundreds of songs that will always stay in that folder. Um, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, but the good stuff should go out, the stuff that, that wants to be outside. And I think it is that time, like I would say right now, it's the, this is the time where I think the world needs music. And when we think about the history of music and all, a lot of the music we love, whether it's from the 80s, 60s, 70s, all this great music, it tends, you tend to notice it comes around a time of turbulence, right? Where society is going through troubles. Uh, that's when the art, like people want to express their feelings in a different way. When times are good, we don't, artists don't necessarily create. We focus on other things and kind of take advantage of that. But when we're in a place that's just weird or unusual, like that's how we express. That just, it had to come out in some way uh, and that's how it did. So, but still for everybody, like those out there that are struggling, it, it helps to, to hear music and to hear other people's perspective and it's a way to connect. Um, what's really cool is I'm seeing tons of these like you know, videos online and like Facebook or whatever, of just people singing and performing. Um, people that probably never did it on stage, but there's these different groups where you can go and just hear people, different artists around the world, just sharing their heart and soul for music. And um, they're just able to do it and people are really digging into it. Um, I think it's the right time if you're an artist just to keep going and you're helping the world by, by sharing your art. So. What's your favorite release that you've done? Um, they're all, like I said earlier, like my song is songs are my babies, right? So I have a, there's a special place for each of them. You're not supposed to have a favorite child. Uh, but I think we all do. Um, you know, I think for different reasons. Um, I think my last, uh, my last album was a really important one. So Fascination Incorporated, it was because it was based on like a time in my life. It was a band that I'd worked in that didn't work. Um, the songs were great, but there was so much emotional stuff going on, right? Um, you know, that band, uh, you know, the drummer, who's a great friend of mine that helped me write the music, ended up passing away. Um, you know, the rest of the band, like, we don't talk. Um, I talked to one member uh, who's uh, done a lot of the synth work. But so it was really, like, just for me to go back and, like, hear those demos and think, like, you know, this is a great song. How do I, how do I recreate it to sound like it was supposed to sound back then? So it was really intentional that I didn't overproduce it, and it sounded like this kind of place that we were in. Um, when I listen to it, it sounds like we kept going. So I, I see that album as like a snapshot in time of how that sh time should have worked out. We had finished the album and went forward. So um, while it's probably not the album that like sticks out as like the one that fans would listen to, I think for me, um, you know, it just has that face in my heart where I'll always be able to look back and it was really meant a lot to me. So definitely probably my favorite album just for those reasons. I think musically, I think the one that's coming up is, uh, is another one where it's signifying this next chapter for me. This moment of like stopping music and take putting on the hold and working on other things and um, this kind of reconnection to my musical passions uh, and just I think the sound design is great and I, every song like different things are coming out and I, I see my growth as an artist in that. But it hasn't been out yet, so we'll see if that retains. I think we're always excited about our next thing. Um, two years down the road, I can tell you it's not that one anymore. But um, I feel like that album, Fascination Incorporated, is definitely. It's just going to be there just because of what I mentioned. So, well, that's good. You know, it's like it's a it holds a firm place in your heart. It's it's something that was very important to you. Something that that you you really connected with at that point in time. And I think for artists, you know, we have these we go through these periods of of our life where we're like, it doesn't matter the people that we're working with. It could be the people that we're working with or the feelings that we're feeling at the time. You know, they inspire us to write and really kind of add to the to the narrative of the world. You know, and I think that when we when we look back on those things, I think we we realized, hey, this is what has made me the person that I am today. It's all of these lessons that I've learned dealing with these people or dealing with that time alone. And I think for a lot of also for a lot of solo artists, it's like you know, sometimes when we create something, it's like, it'll be beautiful to our ears. We're not necessarily sure how it's going to translate to the rest of the world. And then when we put it out and people actually like it, we kind of go, whoa, you know, wow. And then years down the road, when we look back at it, we kind of go like, you know, this was actually a standout thing for me. I actually really did a good job. And your newest singles that you put out, Faster Than Light, gotta say, 
amazing track. I absolutely love it. I love the remixes too. Like everybody's interpretations of that song. You put a lot of effort in that. And I cannot wait till we get to hear the album in its full entirety because I think what it's going to say to a lot of people is that, hey, this is me. This is who I am. This is my creativity. This is who I want to be. This is who I am inside and who I've always wanted to be all of the time. This is all of me. And you guys are just going to enjoy it. You really will. And I think from, you know, for me to you guys out there, everybody watching, I already know that you guys are going to love it because I love it and it's going to be great for you guys. It's good to hear. So yeah, yeah you never know what's, what's going to happen, right? So you put these songs out and like, you're jamming and like, yeah, faster than light, it's great. And then you put it out to the world and you're like, okay, now what's going to happen? And you kind of have this moment of like hesitation. I'm still in that place. It's been out for two days and, you know, there's always mixed reviews and it's, you know, some people are going to love it. Some people are going to be like, ah, it's too 80s or, you know, I get the thing with that one, like it's too 90s and like do this retro and however you want to take that. Um, that's where I was in that moment. Um, but it's super fun to do. I've been doing a lot of these remixes. So um, kind of exploring different sides. Like one thing is me as an artist, like I have trouble staying in one place. So if you look, you know, if you go on Spotify and you look back, like every album is like changing, right? So Fascination Inc. was like a full band style where I hired studio musicians around the world to like play guitar and drums. And I wrote it on synths, but then had it all kind of redone. Um, like a full band was present. Um, before that, it was like EBM. This one is a little bit more, I don't know where it sits. It's like this 80s, 90s cyber synth wave, synth pop conglomerate. Um, but I thought that song itself needed different mixes. So I ended up doing, you know, the more kind of dancey one, uh, the Million Miles one. And then I don't know what I did with the happy rocket mix. I ended up just like going for this happy like techno uh, vibe. But it was fun to like just recreate it. I had one song and in three days I just redid it all in different ways. Uh, kind of as different versions to like explore a different side of the songs. I find that really fun. I, it's actually something I plan to do for the, the future releases. So now they have these tracks and I'm working on, and every track will probably come out with a different mix that gives you a different feel. Um, I think that's just kind of cool. I'm thinking about how do I continue that without you know a full album, but really like this is the song and this is another mix that goes with it. Especially now, like I'm an album fiend. I love, you know, what got me into music was like taking records and just like feeling the album as a whole. Um, which I think is really cool, but I think now in today's uh, society, everybody's streaming, right? So everybody wants the one song, or um, it's a little tricky to, to release an album because you get one one shot to, to put it out there. And then people listen to the album for a day, and then they move on to the next. But when you have these singles, it's the smart marketing move to keep it moving. Um, yeah. So I'm like, how do I do that my way, right? And it is this, every song has to have, or every release has to have like a feel or a vibe to it, so... I think my plan next after this album is just singles and then I'll probably do a vinyl at the end of like, this is what the album should have sounded like, but I brought you on this journey. To this point. So what was the drive behind getting you into making music? I grew up with music. So um, my parents were opera singers. Uh, they run a small opera company in Michigan. Um, you, if you listen to my music, you're probably like, no, I don't believe that. Uh, there's a reason I don't have an opera voice or a well-trained voice. And it's because like they just, as kids, like they would show up to like my daycare just singing opera and I'm like, mom stop like embarrassing but I always felt like uh because I didn't have that voice it was hard for me to take lessons or anything from them but um you know very early on like my mom would sing these minor melodies to me uh as I was growing up and she would tell me stories that even as a baby I was singing um I would sing them back to her and I was always humming stuff so it's kind of been from like day one um and through through that you know growing up uh, with opera parents like I was a kid on stage and having the curtains open when you're five years old and seeing an audience um, it does something to you and you want that again. You want that feeling of, you know, all eyes are on you and your art is showcased and it's just this feeling, this adrenaline and to have it at such a young age, like you chase that. Um, and then through the years, as I changed, the music changed, uh, you know, eventually it was, you know, I, I love synth music. I was listening as a kid to like Depeche Mode and all these like synth bands. So I'm like, I can do that. Let me get a, a Casio and see what I can do. Uh, it was really rudimentary, right? So I, I remember having a, a synth and then I had two of these tape recorders. So I, I didn't get the concept of multi-track, but I would like play it into the tape recorder and then I would record it and I would play the tape recorder again and then sing over it. And it just kind of went back and forth and sounded like crap, but it was multi-track. Um, eventually I found MIDI and I was like, that's much better and just kind of grew. Um, and that kind of just turned into like, it just, I kept exploring and just, what could I, what else can I do? So what, what's next? And as I grew as a, a person, the sounds changed, right? 
uh, eventually I got out of this dark wave kind of place and I, I kind of drew again back from my inspirations of the 80s. Uh, you'll still hear dark stuff come out because it's just, it's in there. Um, but then like the new order started coming back and the, the pet shop place and all the music I grew up on um, that was a little bit more upbeat, uh, more kind of like poppy, but I, I tend to always have this like dark element to it. So like I'll do like poppy with like a minor key. So, or like if it's super upbeat and happy, it has to have dark lyrics or something like that. Um, so it's always been this like hodgepodge, but uh, it's really that I just kept going. Like I, it's not something I intentionally did. It's just something that I had to do. Um, you know, growing up, I was, I struggled a lot with like anxiety and depression as a lot of people do in teenage years. And for me, music was just a way to let it out, to, to explore music and all those feelings that I found I could get them and put them on recording and then they weren't on me anymore. I was able to put them in a place and that was that moment um, and I could move past it. Um, today it's much different. You know, I'm a, I'd like to think I'm in a great place uh, emotionally. My, my husband would argue with you on that. Um, <laughs> but you know, today it's different. It's different emotions still going on to recording, and, you know, different sounds coming out and just now who I am, I, now how do I express emotions again, just to get them out on recording. I, I feel a lot of artists probably in the same place of just what's in your head now just has to flow out. Um, I think we all have different ways of releasing that energy. And I think for artists, it's their art, right? If you're a painter, you hear them talking about putting the paint on the, the tapestry as a way of just releasing that. And you talked a little bit earlier, it's almost like you get to revisit it, right? So years later down the line, you get to hear that again and remember, oh, that's where I was. That's what I felt in that moment. So in a lot of ways, I guess art is a, a diary, right? So it's this collection of your life that's recorded on whatever format you want to put it on these days. Exactly. And you are, you know, it's like finding that balance in your life. You know, as a creative person, it's like sometimes if things are too happy, you, to, you got to be a little bit dark. If it's a little bit too dark, it's got to be a little bit happy. It's always about finding that balance in everything you do. All the things that you work on, whether it's music, writing, directing, doesn't matter. Everything has its own balance. You know, putting something together, it, it's, all, it's all finding that center of it all. And, uh, you know, going back to what you were talking about, like recording things on, on tape recorders, like when I was younger, it's like, yeah, I was doing the same thing. It's like recording things on tape recorders. It's, it's you just don't know, way you're like, you know, kind of building, building things up, you know, and like, you're like, oh, I'm going to make an album, but I'm just going to do it off of tape recorders. I'm just going to keep recording things, you know, but then you can't mix anything, but it's just the way you, it's just the way you, you did it back then. And, and that's just, that's what helps your journey along the way, because there is no roadmap to any of this stuff. There's no way to go. There's no, there's nothing to follow. It's all in the way that you choose to go about it. And I think a lot of the times artists, like we think that we need to follow this, this particular path, or if one thing works, we need to follow that. But no, it's always about finding the balance and continuing to explore and continuing to to go down different roads that other people wouldn't necessarily traverse and pull from different areas and different influences over the years in your life because that is exactly what's important right there yeah you gotta explore so you know you can't stick to one synth you gotta you gotta get in um because that's where the creative creativity comes like a lot of times when i'm writing a new album i'll you know buy new hardware or buy new synthesizers to like let me learn something else. So in, I find my creati creativity comes from that learning place, right? So, um, you know, getting a synth I haven't touched before and like, let me see what this thing can do. And in that, I'm, it's just discovery. And, and I think that's why you notice in like some of my, my favorite bands, like I always like the early releases, right? Because it's this place where they were still curious. They were still looking for what is that sound? How do I get it? And in that like discovery and trying to find something new or like just learn something new, you actually come up with magic. I think if you stay to the same thing all the time over and over again, you get formulaic, um, and then your sound doesn't evolve. And you'll, you'll kind of plateau. And so you have to like give yourself whatever that is to explore something new. Um, you know, it helps you feel fresh about it, and, and more excitement is put into the release because you're exploring, you're learning, and you're curious. And then you also have to be true to yourself, like yeah. right there. You have to be true to yourself, and you have to go with what you feel in your gut. Go with what you feel in your heart, because... Nine times out of the 10, that's the right way to go. That's, that is the, that, because it's all in the way that you feel. Right, you gotta be happy with it, right? So, and I do hear a lot of artist friends of mine, they're always like, how do I write a song that's gonna be better received? Or they're looking for a sound. 
Um, and I think when you do that, it's, you lose a little bit of yourself, right? And I think, you know, what people want to do is connect with an artist. Um, we all kind of do that. I've had moments where I'm like, I got to write the best single I can to get out there. And you have this like kind of pull to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, like if you don't like what you're writing, then it's, there's no point. So you have to write for yourself, put it out there. And, you know, somebody like you or somebody that connects with things that you connect with will also connect with music. But if you're not happy about it, you're going to regret that release. You're going to regret that work. So um, at the end of the day, it's do what you love to do. Doing exactly what you love to do. What are you looking forward to accomplishing the most moving forward? Ooh, a lot of things. Uh, in music, um, you know, I think next is just getting this album out because I've been sitting on it and like, you know, I'm holding back and like trying to get it out on, on time and in you know, a cadence. Um, looking forward to getting it out and seeing the seeing how people react to it and just having it be out in the world. Um, really looking forward to the next releases after that. Uh, those are coming up as well. I have, uh, you know, releases all the way through the spring. So just continuing this kind of music exploration and trying to ride this wave of creativity as long as I can. Because uh, there's always this thing in the back of my head, like, you better write when the writing is happening. Um, at any moment, the creativity could go, nope. Um, so I think it's continuing to ride that. I love, you know, when, you know, quarantine is done. Um, you know, I haven't played live since uh, probably a show in, in 2005. Because uh, going solo, it's a little tough, and I've kind of painted myself in a corner because I have guitarists and studio work with different singers and stuff like that. Um, but I'd love to get out again and do do a live show. Um, I think that's something, you know, again, being an introvert, I'm a little nervous about that, and I don't necessarily, like, like that initial show. But once I get out there, it's like I, that feel of doing live show and just the energy you get. Um, definitely something I'd like to do again. So it is in the in the thought process uh, and how I get that done it has to be big so um, that's the challenge so I, I need to find a guitarist and a singer but you know, I want to have a really big show um, just to again explore it there's different it's different to write and produce and create um, than it is to like take something you wrote and like sing it live and have it perform so um, it's been a long time but I'm definitely looking for, forward to that um, and yeah just continuing creating you know, I just want to continue to like make sure in my life I create space so that, you know, every month I can release an album or an EP or whatever, um, or a single, whatever it is that I can just continue this. Um, you know, I think for me, this is a musical wake up call of like, you have something, this is a, a passion of yours and keep doing it. So more so than not, I'm just curious about what the next thing I'm going to write is. Well, you know what? I look forward to that. I look forward to seeing you perform live. I look forward to seeing you come up with a huge stage show because I think that would be amazing. And, you know, you're right. Whenever you go to perform live, like especially if you're an introvert and you're, you're kind of feeling a little, you know, maybe you don't know how it's going to go. You know, just always think about it. This in the back of your mind is that, hey, I am up here to share my creativity with the world. I'm here to make these people feel joy, make these people feel hope, make these people feel like they're the most important things in the world right now, you know, and to convey my feelings and who I am inside. And uh, if we can, if we could just do that, and we get up there and perform live and we, we look out at the crowd and we just fall into the music everything else melts away. It just does. It melts away. And all it is, is you conveying your feelings to the world. Five minutes right before you get on stage, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, you know, you can start with, a, you start with a live stream. You never know. Start with a live stream, go from there. It's like have thousands of people watching you through your computer screen, you know, but it, it's all in the way, it's all in the way that you connect with the world, connect with the audience. You know, that right there is what's important. And I look forward to that very, very soon. Yeah, I do too. Maybe a live show will happen on the internet first. At least it's in the comfort of my own home. And with no strangers standing right in your living room, they're just watching you. They're like, you feel like you're on a webcam sometimes, but it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm doing a service for everybody out here. You know what I mean? They're watching me play music or watching me DJ some music for, for everybody's enjoyment. So that can be a little weird too though, because you don't see the people, yeah. you just see numbers kind of like popping up yeah. on your screen and like, Exactly. It's different when you see, you can look out and people are like looking at you and smiling and even singing your lyrics. I think, you know, back when I was in a band performing, like I had this moment where people actually started to learn the songs and I would look out and they were singing along. I'm like, this is crazy. This is nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that feeling of just connecting together over something that, that was written. It's just, you can't top that. You cannot. And you know what? Hey, it's a brave new world. 
So we'll just have to see how it goes and roll with the punches. Yeah. What positive message would you give the world out there? And I think right now it's, you know, we kind of talked about it during the interview. It's uh, whatever it is you love, uh, continue to do it. Don't give up on it. You're going to kind of have different creativity and different drives and pushes in your life. But, you know, whatever it is, if it's drawing, writing, art, music, um, do it. Because I think right now the world needs more of that. I think, you know, you need more of that as a person um, to just let it out and, and explore. I think there's, there's so much connection you can get in that. Um, you know, for me, as an example, I've been a solo artist for 15 years. In this past couple months, like, I've made connections with artists all around the world, and we're collabing on a, what we call a super track, which actually has a name, and we're going to launch that out. And we've been able to, like, meet over the internet. So we have artists from all over, you know, France and Mexico and Venezuela. We have a track coming out in a couple weeks uh, by Lombardo, Aftermore, Diorama, and Wild Ellie and myself that wouldn't have existed without this kind of just exploring and creativity and connectedness so um, again i think everybody just explore meet when each meet each other you don't know what kind of creativity can happen when you uh, share ideas and, and get out of your own little bubble even though we're kind of locked up in our, our apartments right now um, the good news is we have an internet where you can do these things right i can't imagine any other time in you know you think about the 80s they could not they didn't have internet they couldn't connect with artists and, and collaborate in, in that kind of way i think that what we need is art so whatever that is for you uh, just keep doing it exactly wise words right there from sander everybody connect with the people out there you know connect with artists with creative people with friends with family in any way that you can even though we have to stay disconnected in the real world sometimes we can still stay connected in this cyber world and build, you know, and with everything you do in your life, everybody out there with everything you do in your life, be creative, do what you want to do, find the balance, find that balance and stay true to yourself. Because when you do amazing things will happen and open yourself up to the possibility of new things. Because when you do, you're right. Like I said before, amazing things will happen. New avenues will open up and you will find yourself sharing, sharing that th those things that you have inside with the rest of the world. And that is what's important. So thank you so much, Sander, for taking the time to sit down and do this interview today. Thank you to everybody who took the time to tune in and watch us have this conversation. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our Torfin YouTube channel as we have many more awesome artist interviews on the way, just like this one right here with Sandra Gavin. To everybody, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you guys sooner rather than later. I just want to thank you, Jack, for having me. Um, I think what you do is fantastic. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of great artists. Uh, you know, up and coming or established. And I think, um, you know, you're doing the work that we need to, uh, to kind of highlight stories of different artists and kind of help us reach uh, people that may connect with our music as well. So um, quite valiant and I appreciate what you're doing. Um, and just thank you for having me here. And for everybody out in the world, just like I said, keep, keep at it. So find that thing you love to do and just go all in. Well, thank you so much, Sander. I, I really appreciate your kind words. You know, uh, it's, it's great to hear that. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, uh, but you know what? That's what these things are all about. That's what it's about is, you know, just spreading a little bit of joy, a little bit of hope. And that is exactly what you're doing with your music, spreading joy, spreading hope to people out there who need a light in the dark. So to everybody out there, be sure to check out Sander Gavin and all of his amazing music and all the things that he has coming very, very soon because, believe me, you are really going to love it. So for me to you guys, dream it, build it, let it grow. Thank you guys so much. I love you, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.